I will definitely need this. Hello. Hello, my, my people. All 15 of you that watch these videos. <laughs> nah, I appreciate any of you that do get to watch these. And uh, I know some of them are long, but uh, I like to think it's because I got so much information to share, not because I am long-winded or anything like that. So, 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 what are we doing today? Well, first off, we're going to do some real fun. We're going to show off some pickups I got from Second Charles. Now, I think it was about a week ago, last weekend, not today. Uh, so it would have been a week from 9-11, which would have been 9-4, September 4th. And we went out there and... Or maybe it was on 5th. I don't know. I don't know that these are all blur. I've been working every freaking day. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, they had a cool sale. Buy five, get five free, right? Right. Well, that's an opportune time to pick stuff up. Now, you're not. I'm not expecting Salvation Army prices of getting 50 cents each, which are great. But I got some nice finds. I think... I ended up getting 20 movies for about 50 bucks. And I don't think that's too bad, 250 a DVD. I really don't think that's that bad. And where this is ideal over something like a Salvation Army is that I get to pick what I want. Salvation Army, it's like slim pickings, and I take what I can get. All right. So without further ado, let's go. Um, got picked up some TV and some movies, both. We got Workaholic Season 1. Now, I did watch some of this on Comedy Central back in the day, not a ton of it, but I liked what I saw. And I, I got to say, this dude here, he reminds me of like a young Jack Black at times. Now, not the singer, but, you know, not, not a singer, but he's pretty funny. Um, I mean, some great faces going on there. Uh, but yeah, the show, what I saw of it was entertaining. So I figured a whole season for $2.50 about, you know, good. I finally got one of my big pickups that I've been wanting. One of my one of my jewels, Teen Witch. Um, it is such a bad movie, a bad '80s cheese movie, and it's right at the end of the '80s, I believe. I believe this one was '89, um, 1989. But Teen Witch, if you haven't seen it, the plot pretty much goes like this: Girl is total geek at school. Wants rich, uh, wants pretty boy. Um, I don't remember if he's a quarterback or what, but basically um, finds out she has magic powers and learns how to use the magic powers and gets whatever she wants. But finds out that you know people liking you for just you know because you force them to like you, they're not really liking you. And then you get a shooting star says the more you know. So. But it's it, it it's it's very cheesy. I mean, there's a rap battle in it, and it's not a good one. So, all right, this movie: Danny DeVito, Bette Midler, Nev Campbell, and Jamie Lee Curtis. My wife said she saw this before we started going out, and um, so this would have been in like the late '90s, and I think this was like right before we started going out. And it's called Drowning Mona. Now I've never seen this, but I like Nev Campbell. You know, I like the whole cast, to be honest. Um, I think it even has Casey Affleck with blonde hair. That's Casey Affleck right there. I don't know if it focused on him, but um, I got to say, it looks interesting. It looks interesting. And uh, it has a director's commentary and some lead to scenes, you know. Now, this one, this is just pure nostalgia. I mean, this is not a great movie, but but Beavis and Butthead do America. It's a it, it's it's such it's such great cheese, you know. It really is, you know. Especially there's this part where they stumble upon these two guys that look exactly like them, uh, but older, which is pretty funny. And then uh, there they are in the back. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just great. It's great stuff. Pretty much. Their TV gets stolen. They hit the road trying to find their TV that was stolen. That's that's all. That's, that's the plot. That's how deep it goes. 
Hey, movie edge. Yeah, we got to get these uh, streams going where we're both, where we're doing these together, sharing the screen, split the screen. But yeah, it's a it's an MF party. It is. It's a it's 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 a party now. Um, so way back, I went to the thrift the, not the thrift store, but the um, antique mall, <laughs> the the thrift mall, and I picked up a ton of DVDs for a dollar each. Now. They had one there I could have gotten for two dollars and I forgot to pick it up right at the end. But I, I had I was tired. I looked through thousands, I feel like thousands of DVDs that day. I'm not even kidding. If I ever go back there, I'm recording it a little bit so you can see what I was looking through. Anyway, I didn't pick up the movie and I was a little depressed that I forgot. But when I was at this, I did pick up this. Eddie Murphy Delirious. I forgot to get Eddie Murphy Raw. But Eddie Murphy Delirious. Um, I don't know if it's great. I like Eddie Murphy. I've heard this is kind of edgy stuff, low stuff that he wouldn't get away with saying today. And that's part of the reason I'm buying these. Um, a lot of stand-up stuff. Stand-up stuff. Um, I just don't see it being on the streaming services with how everybody gets so butthurt about everything everyone says. You know, um, you know, everybody's so overly sensitive. But back in the 80s. You know, people said some shit. Really, they did. And so, you know, this is from 1983, the original, uh, the original special. So, Eddie Murphy, delirious. Yeah. Um, we got here, movie Jennifer Love Hewitt, and I haven't seen her in anything since. I mean, I did pick up that Ghost Whisperer series. I haven't watched it though. But I think the last thing I saw her was maybe like, I still know what you did last summer. I don't even think I saw a third one of those. But this one's Sigourney Weaver, Jennifer Love Hewitt, and Gene Hackman in a movie called Heartbreakers. And now what this sounded like to me was it sounded like almost like uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. It looks like Ray Liotta's in this too. But it's not uh, Jason Lee. Yeah, Jason Lee. But it sounded like a Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, what women hustling a man instead of men hustling a woman. So, you know, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if I'm right, but it looked interesting enough to get Sigourney Weaver. I mean, she, she's very attractive right there. I mean, she always, she still is. She still is. But at Jennifer Love Hewitt, it's a good cast. That's a good cast. And that's the thing. A lot of times a good cast can save a bad movie or a bad movie um, can still be good because it's got a good story. There's a lot of cases though where neither are present. And those are the those are the ones that you end up with buying at Dollar Tree typically. And then you watch it and you go, "Why did I even get this?" Don't get me wrong, Movie Edge. You know, Child's Play. Um, I think I was watching um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers the other night. I didn't get that far into it, but I started watching that. There's a lot of great movies you'll get there, but those the majority of the stuff at Dollar Tree is crap. Um, and I know because I bought a lot of dollar crap. So, um, but hey, it's extra movies to watch, things I've never seen. So I'm interested. Horrible Bosses Two. I've seen this. My wife hasn't. Um, I like the first one a little more, but this one's good. It's a very good continuation movie. Whether they'll make a third one or not, I I, I doubt it. But um, the Horrible Bosses movies are good. Um, those are better for, for me than, than a lot of the other typical guy comedies, you know, these days. Um, trying to think of what else was one. Game Party, I think it was Game Night. Game Night? Game Night was good, but that's not all guys, you know. Anyway, this one was a good pickup because this was, and these are all about like four bucks on average and four to six dollars. So that's why you got the 250 average. Uh, this had three movies on DVD, Bachelor Party, Back to School, and Weekend at Bernie's. All great movies, all three, you know, minty, perfect condition, which I screwed up Weekend at Bernie's. I put in my drive to put in my computer and it like the disc wasn't laying in there right, but it didn't get didn't get much. Just got a little bit of a smudge on it, it's, you know, shows it's been used. Um but it, it's it's fine. Didn't damage the data layer. Uh, but Bachelor Party, I did not have. And that is a great Tom Hanks movie. I found myself cracking up watching him play tennis in that and just hitting him like home runs over the fence. <laughs> it, 
and he's just he's completely sarcastic the whole movie. It's it's like in that vein of um, Money Pit, you know, those early early Tom Hanks movies where he's just so over the top. I love it. Oh yeah, Weekend Bernies and Back to School. I already had those, but great movies nonetheless. Um, looks like. Yeah, and those are both widescreen, so I don't know if I had those in widescreen already, but I think I did. Um, on the way back from the second Charles, of course. Oh, it is? It's out of print. I wonder if I have it on Blu-ray. I might even have it on Blu-ray. I'll have to check my collection on that. Um, it's not shocking that these old movies are going out of print because they want you to just go and subscribe to their streaming services, you know? But... This one I picked up at a Salvation Army on the way back. There was a couple of Salvation Army, um, or one Salvation Army, and I did it. I ran in, got a couple of things, and got out. So I only spent like I think like two bucks in there. Um, Alien vs Predator was in there, so I did end up picking that up. Now what was funny was under that disc, and I don't even know where I ended up putting it because it's not very good. I checked it out. Uh, so I didn't even check out the discs at the Salvation Army because my wife just wanted to get home. We were all tired. We had gone over to another place next to the second of Charles, a sea life aquarium with our son and such. So we're tired. I didn't even check out this disc, but underneath it squeezed under there is somebody's hidden disc of naughty America presents. That's right. Housewives. One on one. Volume two. And don't worry, I've cleaned this off really well before I touched it. <laughs> so, but that that was funny to find in there. It wasn't Alien versus Predator, but uh, yeah, that was in there. <laughs> I do. Hey, what's up, Renee? No, babe. Okay, Vince. I to see if you were working. No, I'm not working. <laughs> I'm working on my YouTube channel. No. Um. Anyway, interruptions. No. This is Guns Akimbo. I saw this. We watched this streaming. I think we watched it on streaming, and it was really good. But um, I wanted to own it. I, I you know, I, I want to get if I can get a Blu-ray of it cheap enough at some point. I'm gonna definitely upgrade because the visuals in this were good. But Guns Akimbo, um, really good movie if you haven't seen it. Daniel Radcliffe is great in it. Um, Kind of a Scott Pilgrim esque kind of feeling to it, to me, for me at least, for me, uh, with some of the special effects and such. But uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting. It's definitely an interesting movie to watch. Uh, it's not the deepest thing, but it's just it's funny. It's a fun. It, it's just one of those weird. I guess dark, dark comedy, action, dark comedy. I guess they don't consider it a dark comedy, action, thriller, but I, I kind of thought it was like a dark comedy. I was like laughing a lot of the time. Maybe I shouldn't have been. I don't know. You tell me. Did did anyone find Guns Akimbo to be a bit of a dark comedy? You know, was it? All right. This, I did find, um, and I think Movie Edge, I think you were asking about this. I did find this, the third of the Kevin Smiths. So he did have a third one, a three evening. A Three Evening with Kevin Smith. So this one's called Sold Out, A Three Evening with Kevin Smith. So this is the third one he's done. I don't have the second one, which is the sequel or something like that. Um, but this one's the uh, third one. And I mean, I'm hoping it's good. I haven't watched the first one yet, but I find Kevin Smith to be funny. So if, I, if I'm disappointed in it, you know, it's $2.50. It's not going to kill me. Now, we all know there's not many new movies out lately, but one of them is a third movie in a franchise, and I did I realized I didn't own the first one, so I did pick up Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. All right, George Carlin, the great George Carlin, playing Rufus, dude, and then Bill and Ted, and I am I do want to see this movie, but I'm not going to pay like $20, 25 bucks to see it. Just not going to happen. I'm also not really looking into going into the theaters right now. So, um, another TV series pickup. This one was cheap. 
I think this was four bucks. I saw this way back in the day uh, when video CDs were the way you, you downloaded all the pieces on a news feed on the news. Uh, what were those called? The news news groups back in the day. And I downloaded. Thank you, Movie Edge. See, Guns of Guns Akimbo is so great. Now, I down I, I downloaded each of these back in the day, burned them to video CD and had them. I never saw the end of the series. Though. I don't think I watched the last episode or maybe it just gets canceled in it, you know, and you don't really get an ending. But irregardless, I like the actor. Um, I forget his name, though. God, because I haven't seen him in a lot of stuff lately. Jay, Jay Moore. Could be Jay Moore. Anyway, action. Um, pretty funny series about making a movie. What's funny is um, I was watching the Get Shorty um, series. I'm from HBO or Showtime. I think it's HBO. Uh, it reminds me a lot of this, not completely, not the whole, you know, other angle, but the whole making a movie and running into problems and such and rewrites and all that. It reminds me of this quite a bit in that respect. Uh, but yeah, this action, if you've never seen action, it's worth watch watching. All right. Um, here's one of the wife's pickups. She was helping me fill out because I wanted to get like 20. She was picking out some things. And this she picked out has a great cast. Jennifer Aniston, Kevin Costner, Shirley MacLaine, Mark Ruffalo. Rumor has it. Never seen it, but it's probably Jennifer Aniston playing the best character she can, which is Jennifer Aniston. Um, you know, other than that, it's probably just, you know, another romantic comedy. And those are good. I, I There are some really good ones out there. There's some real crap ones out there, but there's some really good ones. Um, another find at Salvation Army, and I want to pick this up for a while, but not for more than 50 cents because I don't love it that much. We love the series, but not the special that much. But um, always saying Philadelphia, a very, very sunny Christmas. And it's like basically two episodes, and it's considered part of season six, at least on the uh, moviedb.org site, where I have uh, Cody connect to to um, pull down information. So this is considered episode 13 of season six. So there you go. Next on the list, another one the wife picked out. This is called The Shunning. No, nothing about this, but Beverly Lewis's The Shunning, One Secret Torn Between Two Worlds. Looks like she's a uh, Amish. She's Amish. So it says here, Kate has always struggled with the rules that define her sheltered Amish community. But when a wealthy outsider begins asking questions about her family, Katie begins to wonder about her origins. What connection does this woman have to her life? And how will the unraveling secrets challenge Katie's faith? There you go. Sounds interesting to you? Then see it. The Shunning. All right. I'm pretty sure... I don't know. I don't remember if this was a, a dollar or if this was one of the 250 pickups or one of the Salvation Army pickups, but I, I like this movie enough to want to own it. Jersey Girl. So I, I, I decided to get this. Especially George Carlin's in it. Liv Tyler pretty hot in it you know i and i gotta say i always forget his name jason biggs um i was watching american pie the other day i that that actor he he gets he doesn't get the best roles in the world but the movies he's in he does a good job wedding days with a d-a-z-e so I picked up that was a good one um Britney Spears. Oh, this was definitely at the, yeah, this was at the uh, Salvation Army. Britney Spears live and more. But it's it's pretty good. It has some SNL sketches on it that she did. You know, her great acting where she's staring right at the right at the script for the most part. But it has some music videos on it as well. Um, I mean, for 50 cents is a good pickup because, again, this to me, concerts, comedy specials, is the kind of stuff you're not going to find on streaming at all. And the kind of stuff that's even becoming hard to find, period. This I did get at this one was uh, Second Charles. The Bad News Bears Go to Japan. Uh, now, I know it's I know it's not going to be good. I know it's not going to be good. Let's start there. But let's also say I own the other two Bad News Bears. So let's complete the trilogy and just put them all, put them all in there. And I, I do got to say, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if you haven't seen my video, again, on storing DVDs and such, go check it out. 
Um, it allows these to be much thinner and the discs just fine inside there. It's in its own little sleeve. You can kind of see, but yeah, I, I had to pick it up. It was two bucks. I just, I picked it up separately than the other 20. So I guess technically I got 21. Um, this was a Salvation Army pickup from, I think, before last weekend. But it was a good pickup because it was a two-disc movie. Not the not, not a movie people all people love. You do? Bam. There it is, man. And how do you like that they wrote the Go to Japan and that, you know, the, the 80s Japan font? Maybe even 70s. Let's see. I think this is, yeah, 78. But this next one I got. It was a special edition, two disc special edition of King Kong, the uh, Peter Jackson one, and it's it's pretty good movie. I mean, I'm not sure how the special effects hold up, but I like Jack Black in this. Jack Black was perfectly cast for this movie. Um, who else is in it? Is it Adrian? Bro no, it's not Adrian Brody, is it? No. Colin Hanks is in it. Oh, it is Adrian Brody. Well, no shit. Jamie Bell, Naomi, Naomi Watts. Okay, she plays the main heroine. Adrian Brody is the main hero kind of guy. And yeah, and then you got Jack Black in it. All right, let's keep moving. Um, actually, that one, that's a previous one I just was, I was checking something on, so I brought it upstairs. But this is a movie I've been looking for for a while because I had not seen this in ages. And it's only in full screen, which is a bit of a bummer. But if that's the only way I can get it, then that's the only way I can get it. They're, um, they're kind of a bit of assholes. Because on the back here, one of the images show, is shown in widescreen. Uh, but Hero. Now, this is not the Jet Li one, as you can see. It's more the Dustin Hoffman one. It's uh, got Andy Garcia. You got Gina Davis. And you got Dustin Hoffman. And it's a good movie. Um, a guy who's down on his luck um, sees a plane crash. He goes in and he saves them all, but he doesn't get credit. I'm going to leave it there because anything else starts getting into real spoiler territory. But it's a, it's a good story. It's a good story about um, the media, especially about the media and how we um, overhype some stuff. And it's, I mean, probably more relevant today than it was at the time, to be honest, and how we treat some people based on certain stuff. But there you go. So check it out. Look at the middle image. The other two are full screen. That's fine. Those are those are four, three. But look at that middle one. What the hell? Why would you make that middle image widescreen like that? Is that just like a, you know, like a, <laughs> what is that? Is that like, we have the film strips, you don't. All right. Another comedy. This was picked up at the second Charles. Um, and it's about an hour drive from here. And that's why I don't go there often. Um, and I ended up with one disc that is probably going to end up being defective. I can't read it. Um, which means, you know, I kind of got gypped. But I'm not going to, you had to go back, I think, within a certain number of days. And I'm not going to drive an hour for $2.50. An hour there, an hour back. That wouldn't be worth it. But this one was okay. And um, I like the I like the comedian Patton Oswalt. It's no reason to complain uncensored. Comedy Central special. You know these these uh, Comedy Central ones. I know they're usually about half an hour, and this was probably about the same. These these are getting harder and harder to find. These old Comedy Central DVDs. Um, this was something I just picked it up because it was there, and it said the actress's name. Laura Prepon. This was actually, I was going over to check out at the Salvation Army and it was right by in by the line. So I just kind of looked and I was like, oh, okay, 50 cents, sure. So Laura Prepon from that 70 show and such, um, Donna. And uh, the other one's Misha Collins. I don't know anything about this. Uh, it just say evil has a beautiful face. So I'll, we'll go with that. But I don't like to usually read the synopses. Sometimes it gives me too much. <laughs> Hi, do you remember me, Cole Gary? I don't think I do. do. Were you talking to me a lot early on in the channel when we were doing more stuff about video games? That might have been when when you were uh, when you were watching more. I don't know, Cole. Tell me, 
I'm trying to remember. I honestly don't remember fully, but it was it more early on? Because I haven't seen your name in a while. I can't say that. But Movie Edge, um, on Hero, if it does come out on Blu-ray, yeah. I If it's widescreen, definitely picking that up because I don't want... I don't like this full screen stuff. I I really don't like that. But if that's the only way I can have it for two fifty, I'm not going to be that upset. You know, it's a, it's better than nothing. I hate those words, but it is. It's better than nothing. Um, another one I picked up. I, I, I don't know if I showed some of these previously when I picked them up. If I did a quick video, but I think it's been a little while since I did one of these videos. Um, but Dream Girls looks good. You know. This guy here on the back, I'm pretty sure this is Jamie Foxx or whatever, but this dude looks like Billy D. Williams right there. I mean, I mean, Jamie Foxx, if that's Jamie Foxx, is really looking like Billy D. Williams, and I'm pretty sure this is Eddie Murphy right here. What was that, what was that group Eddie Murphy was in in um, Coming to America where he's like, chocolate, chocolate something. Chocolate, not, ah, God, I forget what it was. It was some group he had. It's like chocolate, you know, I was like, eh. <laughs> it's just so stupid. I love Coming to America. That is a great Eddie Murphy movie. If you've never seen Coming to America and you like Eddie Murphy at all, especially early Eddie Murphy, you owe it to yourself to see that. All right. Um, I think I showed this one off, but The Craft. Anyone know The Craft? It's an F. Campbell one. I think I showed this previously. I think it was just one I hadn't gotten around to copying. Um, yeah, I think this might be another one. Last House on the Left. I know nothing about it, but it, I, some of these teen horror ones, I watch them just loving watching everybody get killed. You know, it's there is a Mill Creek widescreen of Hero, but it comes in a multi pack, which is kind of turn off. If those sometimes those multi packs do drop down though, sometimes they get they get cheap enough where it's worthwhile to uh, pick it up. Um, and then, okay, so here's the one that's bad of mine, unfortunately, Club Dread. And if you've never seen Club Dread, it's a pretty funny movie. What's, what's pretty funny about it is, uh, is just this, this whole, and I don't know why they show what they show there on the cover, because I think that's ruining the movie, if I remember correctly. But, uh, it, it's just a stupid movie. And <laughs> Bill Paxton plays kind of like a Margaritaville kind of thing going on. And he's singing a song of hamburgers in paradise or something like that. And it's just so plain stupid. All right. So now let me do something here for the quick second half of this video. And it's more like quick, uh, almost done of this video. But so some people have asked me, you know, how many of those discs do you actually have you know, cases or whatever, because some people want some and not a lot of people. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to act like these are going, these, these are going fast. You better get them now. Yeah. But I'm trying to get rid of them locally, but I'm going to be selling some. I know Cal L um, had asked for some and I, I'm going to try to ship some out to him and such. But these boxes, all these boxes you see here are filled with blank Amory cases. And these are just the single black cases. And there's there's different kinds, of course. And um, I'll show a, a couple here. Um, I'm going to go up in the video. There's different ones in them. So you have ones like this, which are ones that are more with the recycling cutouts and ones that are just solid black. Um, and they're all just filled. And I do mean filled. Then I have the stack, and it's it's a stack. I have some Blockbuster, a ton of Blockbuster cases, and they all have the Blockbuster thing inside of them. Look. Wow, what a difference. Blockbuster video, you know? So I have a big stack, two stacks of those um, to get rid of. And then over here, you can see all these. These are all blank cases, clear ones. Or white ones, some are double whites, some are double clears, even triple clears, quad clears. There's, um, and then there's tons of double black ones over there. So I have, you can see, a ton of these cases to get rid of. And I can always just throw them all in the recycle bin. Um, oh, Cole, yeah, definitely, man. No problem. Um, 
You know what, though? I will let you know. There is another headphones. Um, I got to find out what the model is again for my friend, um, Alex. She, she was on one, one video, one or two videos with us. But she found another one that is wireless where you plug something into the um, headphone port. And I think they're 25 bucks or something. Um, I don't know if they work as well because I didn't try them. She tried them out. But you plug something in the wireless port on the top. And then you can basically um, use, use the headset through the headphone port. So I don't know fully how that works. And that's why I want to check it out before I do any recommendation video on it. But I know the uh, G533s are getting harder to find. So, and they're getting more expensive because, of course, they probably don't make them anymore. And I don't think the Switch is updated to use new, any new headsets. But this one would work no matter what Nintendo does because it doesn't have to talk through a special dongle or anything. And hopefully, um, Cole, just <laughs> real quickly, hopefully you saw the video I put up about how to use it um, when you're not docked. You can use those head uh, that wireless headset when you're not docked as well. Um, you just have to buy that dongle I, I talk about in a different video. So anyway, um, all of these I talk about I had silver ones, white ones, orange ones, pink ones. And all these black ones are like double cases where they have the extra tray in them. And I know Cal wants some of those. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to sell them. I have them up on the uh, Facebook marketplace. I may put them up somewhere else because I've seen how much they are new. And a lot of these are pristine condition because I take care of my shit, really do. And you can see and I, they're not all perfect. Some of them have the labels on the outside. And hey, I can't control that. But a lot of them, I've been able to get the labels off completely clean. There's no smudges, tears, or anything. And those are the ones I would try to sell, like, top-notch, top dollar, you know? Um, and then it, later in this video, this was a video I was going to post a couple weeks ago. Never got around to it. Just been too busy to even go and post it. But I wanted to show you guys. I think it's here. Let's see. I wanted to show you. This is what I did in my basement. Um, God, why did I stop it? Just two seconds too late. This is the shelving unit that has them on it. And the curve is not from them. They do not weigh that much. Um, this curvature is already there from uh, me having comic book boxes on it at one point. If you've ever had a box of comics, the long boxes, and held one, you know those weigh a ton. Um, and I'd have like three or four comic boxes along this, and the middle would start to bend. But what's nice about this, um, I can't get those headphones you spoke about. Wireless headphones with USB. Yeah. Yeah. And get the one, get that dongle I talk about. It's a, a USB, uh, Cole, it's a USB A to US, I think USB C to A adapter. So it allows you to plug the dongle in and then it has USB C out. That Like it's a female USB A to male USB C adapter. Then you can plug the dongle into there and use them even when you're remote. So if you're using it on like a stand, or using it handheld, you can still use it. You bought 81 Blu-ray cases from a YouTuber that does what you do with the movies. Oh, cool. I And and, and I will say this, Movie Edge, good point. I may do this with my Blu-rays now. Um, we're thinking about, because my Blu-ray cab, my cabinet's in my living room, which I'm going to do a video on soon to show off my Blu-ray collection. Those are filling up pretty quickly. Um it's, it's getting kind of crazy. Those are filling up pretty quickly. So I may have to do that. And I may just do it with like the shitty Blu-rays, meaning the movies that are not the greatest. But yeah. Well, no, you can, Cole, the, the dongle that I'm mentioning, the, the dongle works with the G533 wireless headset. So it, it works with that. It's just a $5 adapter you buy so that you can hook it up when you're not docked but back to this um here i'm just going over the cases and you can see over to the right here i have more cases and we've even bought more and my wife stocked up on because she ended up finding a way to get these for three dollars each uh walgreens has them for about five something those um those snap snap cases i forget what they're called snap a stack or something but these are great cases and um you call dibs on the blu-ray cases okay um, but these, uh, are great. And the way this is working out is you can see, I can fit two across and I, even if I back them up a little and move them between the posts, 
I can even fit four across two tall. So I can fit eight in each rack or eight, eight, eight in each uh, shelf. So I can fit eight, eight, eight. And there's one more shelf down below here that you don't see. So I have 20, I have eight, 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 24 right there. And then I can fit eight on the top there, which gives me a total of about 32 boxes. And I can fit about 130 DVDs in each. So I'm just going to tell you right out, I can fit over 3,500 discs in all these. Now, what I'm doing with some of these lower sets, though, uh, down here in the bottom, is I'm just putting the disc sets in native because they're special box sets and I don't want to tear them apart. So that's what I've done with some of the boxes. So I'm not going to have 3,500. I mean, if you count my Blu-rays and DVDs, I'm at like already like 2,000 something. But uh, yeah, this is... Um, I got to say, I, I, I had a great idea. I looked on Amazon. I found it. I executed. I stayed with it. And you can see just it's hot, so nice to be able to go and access your collection so quickly. The way I was doing this before this, I had to go looking through paper boxes, you know, those, those boxes you saw upstairs, find, trying to find the disc because every time I wanted to add one, it wasn't easy. This, it's so easy to add a disc into one of these boxes. And I'm leaving extra room in them so I don't have to constantly do a bump down and move everything to the newer, newest box. But yeah, um, that movie's not that great, Ren Joseph. Either is that Phantom Menace. But um, but yeah, I, I have any, and a lot of these, some of these DVDs, don't get me wrong. Um, you're fine, man, Cole. You're fine. I, I don't mind helping people out. But these. This is a great way to store your collection, especially if you live in an apartment and you're pressed for time, uh, pressed for space. But you can see down here, I just put the Futurama sets in it like that because, you know, this way I can keep everything together. And I do have one more big tote that I have to do like this. And then I'll have like everything will be in these little boxes. And that's what I want. I want everything in one spot was stored one way and easy to access. And then I think I'm just going to end up numbering the boxes. And that way I'm not trying to do anything crazy where I'm putting A through Z and then re-tagging them. Okay, now it's not A through C, it's A through B and then B, you know, and redoing them. Or put little, maybe tiny little pieces of paper that are like white erase, you know, like the erasable or something like that. That would probably be good. Um, but yeah, I have cases. I have a shelf down there for these and the amount of space these are taking up is so much less. And right here I show the extra tote that I have. Yeah, there's my comic books on steel shelves with the wood so they don't bend. Those are all my comics from like the 90s and very, very, very early 2000s and very, very late 80s. But you can see all these box sets I still have to kind of put in those. So that's pretty much what's left. Anything I could, I took. And I moved them into those boxes already, but the rest of the stuff has to be done. But that's where things stand, and that's kind of why I've been so busy the last few weeks, and 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 the and uh, just a lot of demands from work. And I even show here, you know, the empty boxes that I used to store these things in, that are just now completely empty, and I have a ton of these boxes now, which is great. But that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you guys. I'm really happy. I could not be more thrilled. I got my collection organized. I just have to go through and do a, a comparison with my Blu-ray.com site or Blu-ray.com site. Make sure my collection on there matches what I actually have because I have found ones I forgot to add into there. And uh, I'll be golden. But I've turned the corner. I've got this collection under control. It's not spiraling out of control to where a divorce is imminent anymore. Um, great times. You know, I thank you guys for all joining me, checking all this out. Um, you know, check out the video on these. If you end up, um, wanting to have a need or have a need for this, you can even do this with video games with the sleeves. And if you want to keep the video games, the, the like you saw Blu-ray, um, Blu-ray cases fit in these DVD cases fit in these. So switch cases definitely do. Um, we, you know, Sega, Sega Genesis, you can fit almost anything in these cases. Um, really good, really cheap on a uh, Walgreens site. And I think I have a link to them in the video where I go over everything. But definitely uh, leave a thumbs up on this video. Remember to subscribe if uh, you thought this was good. I'm going to keep, I'm going to try to get back on a more, uh, more regular schedule. I just know work is going to be crazy for this rest of September. After that, I'm hoping October becomes a little more breathable. And, uh, as always, 
don't stop collecting. Don't stop loving movies. You can't stop loving Hollywood because they're putting out a lot of crap lately. And uh, love you guys. Stay frosty.